Welcome back to the new professional StarCraft 2, and I thought it'd be appropriate to introduce you to a relatively new professional StarCraft 2 player himself. The 22-year-old European Zerg in the top left in the red. It's Wayne. I know him more as a, a battle Zerg. On the other side, not so new anymore, but still on the younger side of things. By this point, you've seen plenty of his games, and I'm sure you'll see plenty more. The rank 2 Protoss player in the world. The Twilight Talk. It's Max Pax. Yes, clearly the favorite, I think, here. In this, a best of three PvZ. But sometimes, when you move a little bit past the Cyrils and the Rainers of the world, which is very, very hard to do, but if you've managed to do it, you get some of the more interesting and creative strategies. Though, Wayne has been... Uh, reminds me a little more of, like, in a laser with these mid-game timings and just kind of battering his opponent into submission and he's been making more and more of a splash in, in tournaments lately and uh, even with the volatility or maybe because of the volatility of the new patch uh, I, I expect more and more out of him and I only expect one thing from you though uh, it'd be awesome if you could like and subscribe and Jimmy what what are, what are we at I 1,150 likes. Yes, approximately 150 videos to, since we started up in the ante, saying if you could smash that like button, then we'll up it by one the next time. And if we hit that goal, uh, I'll cast another series. And, you know, I'll probably do it anyways. But thank you. I think essentially 100% of the time we've made it. Maybe not on that first day, but 100% of the time, which is awesome because, I mean, I don't know how much it helps, but it, make, it, it makes my day a little bit better, and I hope I can make yours a little bit better as well. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. Hopefully, you've had a good day so far. I kind of cut off my own intro bit there, but let's get started. All right, Oracle comes out, burns through some of the links. Two adepts and an Oracle. The staples start. Looks like Wayne not opting for anything particularly untowards. Just enough to drive this back. Otherwise, roaches. Uh, not roaches. Lings. Queens. Some creep spread to start things off. But otherwise, uh, something you're very used to seeing here on Ocean Bowl. Of course, we get our, our beautiful water map uh, for this season. Very excited. Um, just for all the clips and highlights for that. Make sure to timestamp so I can make a highlight, or Jimmy can make a highlight video at some point. Um, and, uh, let me remember one thing. Jimmy, I told you. Oh, thank you. We, we put the physics, I turn, whenever, whenever we cast this map, I like to turn the physics up so the ragdolls are even more dramatic. Um, production clock. How would you like your physics? Up. Yes. Shut up, Neil deGrasse Tyson. I don't... Not the time. Not the... I'm starting to think this game is unrealistic. Meanwhile, the laser disco balls are activating their light beams in order to burn through the hovering crab lobsters that are collecting um, through their faces the par chunks of the blue rocks and uh, sucking green bulbs out of whatever this building is. The pulsating circle. Yeah. Anyways, the, the lair is on the way. That's as far as that bit's going to get us. Not even to an entire bite, but blink and plus one. So we're going with essentially the stock standard. This was before the major patch. Um, and, and I think now's the time to detail some of those changes. Big changes in this matchup. Hydralis uh, can get their upgrades a little quicker. The big one, the Banelings with plus two melee. No longer one-shot probes. Uh, as well as after getting speed, they no longer get plus five HP. So Banelings in general, uh, less dangerous across the board. Though, of course, on mass are still uh, plenty of a threat. Another one. Ultralisks are a little cheaper. Disruptors cost four supply instead of three, which is uh, a nerf. Um, Guardian shield lasts a little longer. Uh, um, and the mother ship is more like a daughter ship now, to be honest. It is cheaper, 
and can cast all the abilities, but generally they're weaker. And in fact, losing the passive cloaking instead of ha instead of having a temporary active cloak, I think is overall a pretty significant nerf. Um, but I think PVZ not... Uh, now the, another big late game change is that the lurkers no longer uh, get extra burrow speed with adaptive talons. Uh, or no longer get extra movement speed, not burrow speed. They still get the burrow speed. Important distinction. But a little bit easier to be able to chase him down. Well, Stasis covers for the retreat. Max Pax is able to recall most of the stalkers out. So far, a relatively passive game as uh, we have a large map here and a, a lot of choke points you have to go through. I expect this to be a mid to late game macro map. It's not particularly large. The bases are not super hard to attack into past the first three. So I think we're looking at our, our like 150 to 200 supply battles, not our, our maxed out sitting with walls of spore crawlers and cannons sort of base. But, um, well, StarCraft 2 maps don't have a ton of originality uh, for balance reasons, mostly for Liberator and Siege Tank reasons. But uh, this one, while being very original in the look of it, uh, the layout is quite predictable. Well, the Blink Stalkers, you already saw Wayne taking down as many of those rocks, Dustin Browder calling out in despair, but uh, the Zerg want to open up as many paths as possible to potentially flank and attack the Protoss, whereas the Protoss want to prevent that at, at almost any cost. Two Colossi on the way for Max Packs. We're going to have the Speed Banes out of way. And there you go. The Banelings still very good for kind of cleaving their way through. Ooh, there goes the Ravager. Ooh. Contaminate. I see. I see you, Wayne. Contaminate on what was that? The plus two, uh, the plus one armor. Impossible to tell which upgrade is which on the double forge there. By the way, double forge. Beautiful stasis force field. Man links rolling in. Bust through. Oh well, more of them making it through. And the stalkers have nothing left to defend them. Wayne is breaking through the fourth right now. The Colossus pushed back to the natural. The stalkers in full retreat. And Wayne sweeps the field. He should be able to take out that Nexus. The Banelings continue to roll through. No splash damage for Max Pegs means that maximum damage will be dealt to his probes. 31, 33 probes down, and Wayne is going to take out two bases as well. It looks very good for the Zerg player here. What kind of damage on the other side? A few charge lock counterattack. Didn't get... He didn't get the... Okay, so this is a huge deal. If Max Pax lost that Nexus, I think that's tantamount to losing the game outright. It, essentially, if he's down four bases to two... Wayne can refill and hit him again. But the fact he still has this base, and well, he lost so many probes because he actually built so many. He's at 66 to 52. There's that big game timing I was talking about for, for Wayne. He hits with Lair Tech kicking in like the moment his Baneling speed kicks in with as much supply as he, as he can. And almost outright win. But there are four Colossi on the field right now. Stepping to probably enjoying the buoyancy in uh, this underwater map. No longer have to rely on those spindly legs. What if they could just, you know, like. No, no. A colossal. A slight jump. Just a slight jump. They already could go up cliffs. Yeah, but they want to have some fun too. So Max Pax is. He, he can't afford any more mistakes. But the, the big saving grace here is that Wayne did commit on a relatively low economy. He did try to get game-ending damage done and didn't quite land it. So now Magpex has a small chance to be able to bring it back. The Stasis again. Well positioned, but down goes one Colossus. Colossi don't have bonus damage. Uh, they only have bonus damage against light units. And neither Roaches, nor Banelings, nor your mother are light units. So at the end of the day, the Colossi add, start to add up with those extended thermal lances. But against mass roaches, and even Baymax, speaking of the ones that just got out of stasis, uh, are not particularly well suited. 
He, it, it does feel like Max Pax is, is trying to find ways to work without the disruptor. As for supply for a very temporary potential damage is a, a huge cost compared to the Colossus that's at six. If the Colossus, is that an Ultralisk cap? Ultralisk Cavern. For Wayne, he's going to try to chew well. There's a, there are a few units that the Colossi feels more impotent against. Well, one, air units, and two, Ultras. Ultras, I don't know how many Colossus swipes it takes to kill an Ultra, but the answer, I believe, is far too many. As one chitinous plating Ultra should be able to absorb all the Colossus fire. Uh, if well positioned. Max Pack's gonna have to micro him. The Bane Link's closing in, but juggling the, co the Colossi into the prism, trying to keep things alive. The Bane Links are busted through. Plus two melee done, but not the existential threat to those probes. Some will survive. We got a small counterattack, actually looking pretty strong overall. The Nexus itself may very well go down the last road. The Zerglings! What a save! Barely defends, and Max Pax with a counterattack. The Archon helping out a lot, but eventually Wayne will overrun it. But the supplies are dangerously close to even, and again, okay, okay, he, he loses that. Let's not recall one Archon Max Pax. I don't know, but ah, oh, Wayne, that Nexus, his white whale here. Again, the ne it can't be repaired. That's permanent hole damage. That Nexus. One, a few EMPs and and um, one tap on the window away from crumbling. Well, thankfully, Wayne doesn't have any of those EMPs, but he does have plenty of roaches taking down the Colossi. Oracle trying to help out, but wanders in. We've got a warp prism on the other side, though, potentially taking down the evolution chambers. Wayne, on the cusp of victory here, is now kind of uh, straying back from the edge. He's able to deny plus two carapace. Quite a big deal when Ultralis, uh, though he doesn't, I don't think he has any idea, uh, Max Pax, about the Ultras. Oh yeah, he hasn't seen the main since the probe got in, so. <laughs> uh, he's gonna see a Viper consuming here. Chitinous plating is on the way. Ultralis are now 25 minerals cheaper, yes. Yes, what a sale. By today, Ultralis now, 12%, no wait. Give, uh, 12%? No, I, you know what? I'm not here to do man. How dare you? Um, they are cheaper, though. Not that that matters much. Technically, they burrow and unburrow faster, but, I mean, come on. I didn't... Get over here! Um, not quite enough energy to do it again. Max Pax's War Prism has been the thorn in Wayne's side that has kept Max Pax in this game. Without it, he would have been able to bring all of his effort to bear and probably crush Max Pax. But it's a testament to, to Max Pax overall that he's been able to hold on. He's really working this Colossus composition, but here come the Ultra Discs. Chitinous plating is nearly completed. Storm, though, can rip through the groups of Banelings and not easily absorbed in the way the Colossi fire is. Wayne's only had 70 drones here. Zealot counterattack. Max Pax is stressing his multitasking. And uh, Wayne obviously quite accomplished at it, but is it going to be enough? Beautiful storms! Absolutely disintegrating the Lings and Banes, and the Ultra is forced back. We've got Ultra Speed on the way, but Max Pax, Wayne, he's starting to drag it back as there's only two mining, two, three mining bases now. The income's evening out. Despite Wayne taking such an advantage, Mags Pax is, is clawing his way back in, somewhat ironically, against the Zerg. Alright, two Immortals on the way as well, but the Roaches and Lang streaming in towards the third, and again, Mags Pax is forced to divide his forces or else be conquered. Ultralist speed is completed. Two more ultras done. A single viper could yank out the colossi, potentially blinding cloud. Where are the storms? And he loses it. The viper goes down, sniped up, but the blinding cloud is good. 
and another ultra from the back gets melted there but the banelings are covering for a lot immortals drawing fire max Pax retreats to his third loses 32 probes as most of the rest of the lanes at this base the ultras will retreat they could get transfused potentially and he's sending him back home and wayne again and a massive supply lead maybe one more swing with plenty of banelings could be enough max Pax still only has the nexus that has been hurting this entire time. Like, in a better game for Max Pax, I'd debate whether just killing it yourself and rebuilding it would be better, but clearly not here. The Colossi are burning through waves and circlings. The Ultra is not quite able to close the distance in a timely manner, but now the Colossi are forced back. The Templar on the back line. Where's the storm? Where's the storm? Does he have enough energy? Finally, at the last moment, as he gets him into the choke point. The Nexus! The Nexus! Half shields! The Colossi are falling! The Zerglings! Finally! The Nexus goes down, but Wayne loses a lot here. And there's a Zealot counterattack as well. The Zealots find their way in. Gonna kill some of the drones, but look at that probe count. Wayne is far too much. He overruns Max Pax in game one with some beautiful Ultralisk plays. Against that, that's the main weakness. Well, one of the many weaknesses of the Colossi. Honestly, really. <laughs> but they just don't have... that. They're not great against anything but Zerglings. They are not a reliable form. They're reliable, but weak, I guess, is a better way to put it. Um, and Wayne selects the Ultras as the choice, and they power through. Which is exciting to see, but a little rough, clearly, for Max Packs here. As we go in to game number two. Still a very good game out of Wayne. I think he handled that. Like, that is the style of Zerg that is incredibly difficult. Y you can't make any mistakes as Protoss. I don't know. I think part of it is that Max Packs is really trying to discover. Or, or test out new ways of playing without the disruptor which was one of the goals of the patch right uh now of course uh there weren't too many um other options presented especially in this matchup uh to replace the disruptor i think it still will be a staple unit just a little harder to add into your composition and banelings as you saw they're still serving the purpose as being kind of a stiff arm to zone out the army or gouge out your eyes if you uh, are not able to block them. And Wayne handling it really well there. Even the Immortals added in at the end. Immortals also, uh, I think the way it was described, is just an over-specialization. Almost every Protoss unit is specialized at dealing with certain things. So, you end up with an army a lot of the time that is very good at dealing with a dozen different things but also very weak to two dozen okay that might be exaggerating but the numbers are, are equal like the colossi very good against lings to an extent against banelings pretty weak against roaches and ultras and you know on the open field storm is great uh, again against those gr big groups uh, of roaches and uh, to an extent banelings but doesn't really provide a reliable source of damage and the high templar themselves are incredibly fragile stalkers are your kind of basic anti-roach option um as are immortals but those are easily distracted by zerglings and banelings and uh relatively fragile themselves so uh that's not saying it can't be done in that max packs uh played perfectly but I think the Colossus-based army, even with double Robo, like it's Terran versus Protoss, uh, just didn't cut it. Wayne played it very well and uh, kept the pressure on when he could. Honestly, I think th there were some mistakes there out of Wayne uh, where he could have taken out those Nexi, and uh, the game probably should have ended at 10 minutes. But Max Packs used every tool past that point. But... I, I do think uh, the Colossi just aren't going to cut it. Not against uh, a solid Roach Lane timing. Not against the quick Hive Tech follow-up. Stargate. 
may be the end game option. It always has been. Will it always be? And I do want to pose this an even more meta discussion to you, dear viewer. The fourth wall breaking here. Do you want me to debate the implications of each game afterwards on the patch? Or kind of either keep it to the end or save it for other videos? Because I'm kind of learning this alongside all of you. I don't like jumping to conclusions. I'm definitely a let's let the meta settle kind of guy mostly. Though... Uh, I've already made my feelings on the new patch uh, relatively clear, I think. In this matchup, I do think Protoss needs some help uh, overall. I'd like um, either if the Colossus, the, the Band-Aid fix, in my opinion, would be the Colossus. I, I want to go back to that last point real quick. So let me know if you want me speculating on the patch after every game, because everybody's going to do it anyways, but I know it can get really annoying to hear the new patch, the new patch, the new patch all the time. Even though it's true and relevant, that doesn't mean we need to talk about it at, like there's nothing else going on. But I do think the Band-Aid fix would be bringing back the old Colossus, which doesn't have bonus damage against light, just flat damage against everything. That has a risk of creating death ball based compositions, but with the buff to the viper and since that happened the viking and the liberator have been buffed as well so the colossus has gotten weaker where the uh, lurker the viper um and to an extent the ultralisk as well as the viper i mean uh for zerg the uh, lurker viper and uh ultralisk have gotten stronger since the colossus was made into a more specialty unit and for terran the Viking, it got both a uh, attack usability, um, damage point, and health buff. Um, the Liberator's cheaper, um, as well as, nope, oh, that's it. Um, so just the basic built-in counters are better than when the Colossus was originally nerfed. So I'd love to kind of test that out. That's what I think is the simplest version. As we have the uh, Adepts come in, kill seven drones. Was it worth it? Wayne's only had 43 drones. He made a bunch of Zerglings to try to deny the third. That was worth mentioning. And now Max Pax is just picking him apart. So, or maybe we should nerf Oracles into the ground. So that way they can fly for 10 seconds and then crash into the ground and die. Well, the Zergling counterattack is looking good. There are no Oracles back here. The, the, yeah, ooh, the Oracles on the other side of the map and not enough Adepts here. Wayne trying to target down probes. The oracles are out of energy. I'm not locked in here, Wade, actually. <laughs> Never mind. The Zerglings just get out. The Protoss demonstrating their um, just lack of door-based comprehension. Uh, he tries to lock them in, but Wayne now had a nice amount of drones. He used both the pushback of the original units as well as his counterattack as a springboard to slingshot his economy. And now up to 68 drones yet again. A very strong follow-up. Though, this is, it, it seems like a bit of a seesaw game. As now Hydra's on the way. Hydra upgrades a little bit quicker. The Queen's Brenda, where are you going? This was an optimistic. I love, we've never seen this actually. A mix of gold mineral patches and blue mineral patches. I love it, one, because it's a cool idea. And two, because it blends in with the map which is like the cutest thing I've ever seen in StarCraft 2. Maybe not the cutest. I've watched StarCrafts. All right, grab your stuff today. But um, I, I love how it's both an aesthetic and a design choice. Like, uh, and actually like a gameplay choice, which is super cool to me as we don't, like it, it's relatively simplistic, but any sort of originality like that is very cool to see. It is the most beautiful map. It's the reason it was, uh, I believe, second place. Or first. Uh, which one? First or second in the Team Liquid map contest. It just looks too good. And it's well designed. Oceanborn was the other of the top two. I just don't remember which one was which. Mass Hydra against Stalkers. With some Oracle support. Hydras, pound for pound, will beat the Stalkers. Not sure how much either of them weigh, but either way. The Hydras are way better, um, especially in a relatively even fight. 
If the stalkers are able off of creep to kind of dictate the pace of the engagement, they can trade up decently well. But the Colossi are again, well, I, I kind of neglected to mention that Colossi are obviously quite good against the Hydras. And this is a mass Hydra lane composition. So the, the Colossi make a lot of sense here. Stasis, he tries to use the stasis, I think partially. I'm not sure if he knew about the stasis or if he was just trying to flank, but he almost made it so Max Pax was trapped in a prison of his own design there. But the Hydra count is so damn high, trying to make its way up. Where are the Colossi? Well, the Hydras are just trying to bust their way up the ramp, but the concave, too damn good. The Queens are on the way. Where is the, okay, well, there you go. That's the end of this. Wayne doesn't know it yet. He's only got 66 drones. Well, yeah, but the two Colossi will immediately force a turnaround. Where's the infestation pit? There's the lurker den. Yeah, but it's a bit late for that. Max Pax has survived. He's got the Colossi out. He doesn't have extended thermal lens, but with this many stalkers to box out, he doesn't really need it. Yeah, he's now at another evolution chamber, the infestation pit, the lurker den, but those are in the mail and they're not going to be delivered very soon. Whereas Max Pax has Colossi 3 and 4, which essentially invalidate the Ling Hydra composition. That is enough Colossi, especially with plus two ground weapons finishing up, to just melt everything. More like incinerate. I apologize. And uh, I would not be the least bit surprised if Max Pax starts walking across the map. Tiptoeing on the four legs of... Wait, do Colossi have three legs? I, it does however many legs. Right now, Wayne barely has a leg to stand on. As Hydras do not have any. The Queens of the Lings, not particularly stable. Actually, Queens not too horrible at tanking the damage here. They could use their anti-air attack against the Colossi, but still not the ideal choice. A couple lurkers on the way. Hive has begun. Max Pax is on a bit of a timer because if Hive Tech finishes up and he's able to get Vipers or Lurker range, well, that's when things get dicey again and slicey as lurkers get very heavily involved. Are you going to try to base trade? I don't think so. Wayne is just going to try to take out the detection, I think, and use the lurkers for defense. But the stasis wards are certainly stalling this out. They've cut the army down to a much more manageable size. And Max packs. He sets it up and he knocks them down. Magspex with a very calculated defense there. Beautifully done. And uh, just kind of surgically dismantles that Hydra into the Lurker composition. Doesn't work out for Wayne. I do love these players kind of testing out the different styles that, um, well, just in general, the different styles of this matchup. Not necessarily on the new patch. There it is again. I don't, but instead just the various compositions that have been used in this matchup in the past. And while this is a high level tournament, it isn't the world finals. So I think this is the best place for competition where you're going to play these players again. You probably play them on the ladder, but it's different in a best of three in a tournament scenario where, where um, there is money on the line. You do want to win. And, but at the same time, you're willing to try new things or relatively new things. Max Pax is Colossi finding their niche there. That is the timing. All right. I said they're over-specialized. Well, that's it right there. That's what they counter. Uh, Wayne kind of giving him the army. I don't know if he expected him not to go Colossi. Honestly, the Hydra's almost broke through, though. Like, uh, if the Colossi had been 30 seconds later, which is a long time in StarCraft 2, but if they had been 30 seconds later, Max Pax loses the game. So, timing is important, and Croto Boost allows you to manipulate it a bit. All right. Honestly, I, I wasn't sure what to expect from this series. I've been saying... Uh, I've been seeing Wayne, not saying. I'll be honest. But... I've been seeing Wayne get further and further in a lot of the weekly tournaments and larger tournaments. 
So I decided, you know what? All right, let's give it a shot. I'm not sure. I kind of felt like Max Pax was a favorite, but Wayne has been moving up. And so far, it's been one of the most interesting series of the, I'm going to say it again, new patch. Um, and overall. All right. Maximus Paximus. What are we up to this game? I don't know if it's on him so much. Um, so far, it's actually been Wayne who's been varying the unit composition somewhat. But, yeah, we're on Golden Aura, which is another one of the beautiful new maps. Okay, I'm going to call them out specifically. Equilibrium looks like someone put a black and white filter over the map, except screwed it up. And I don't know what's up with that one. Dark's first statement on that map was, does this map hurt your eyes? Which he said to Gumiho. Um, which was also amusing because I'm pretty sure that was the first time Dark had seen the map was in the, like, semifinals of a tournament. But <laughs> that's a very dark way of doing things. And then Reticent Station, which is King Sejong Station 2, almost literally. Um, it's in the description. Uh, is incredibly weirdly high contrast. Oceanborn is also super high contrast, but not nearly as bad. The rest of the maps, like, uh, the, the sheer variety maps is super cool and nine maps in general but those two radisit and uh i don't think we've seen a single tournament game because nobody wants to play on king sage on station two is my opinion but uh, i love the variety at the very least all right enough zerglings to potentially Oh, there. Just a couple links. He doesn't want to commit too many because he needs to defend and also doesn't want him burned up by the oracles. Wayne. Building a lot of links for this stage of the game. He's only had 31 drones. So, very intent on putting some pressure on, potentially delaying a third nexus. Or dealing with the two adepts who have slipped themselves in behind the mineral line here. Oracle maybe trying to participate, but the queens are making sure that doesn't happen easily. Another adept caught. The Zerglings. Oh, wait, no, that was the first one that shaded out, but. Caught and killed. Plus one melee on the way. Wayne droning behind this. Um. That's not a wall. He's able to get. Ooh. Barely. It's in in time. Activates an oracle. A bit of a mistake, I think, there. Well, he's just going to keep it lit up as it costs 25 energy just to light it up. So. Try to use it as a warding tactic. Pun somewhat intended. Fourth next. Fourth hatchery on the way. For Wayne, who's now been droning behind this aggression. And will take the lead in the worker count, as is customary. Usually Protoss. Oh my god. A little the little graphical bug so it's technically still on the ground but it the pervert pillar has slight issues with that i just get a vantage point i'm pretty sure it doesn't provide high ground vision i think i've tested it though i don't remember if that was a different map but <laughs> quite amusing oracles sliding around looking for more opportunity and we'll find a bit in the main All right, driven back. Zerglings, no roach for him. It looks like Wayne is heading towards the Hydras yet again. And it wasn't really, the Hydras did not do poorly. It was just, there wasn't the follow-up nearly in time. That was the main issue. Templar Archives is the choice as well. Spy- Oh! Whoa, 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 whoa! Mutas! There is uh, the Stargate, of course, on the field, which is usual- But if the Spire is not scouted, you can't just start making phoenixes when the Mutas are already in your base, killing your probes. Doesn't work. So. Charge on the way. 
plus one. Uh, ground weapons and plus two melee attack. Ground weapons about to complete. Plus two melee attack just now. Start now. And the Zerglings. Well, the, the Queen's trying to get involved, but the three oracles are absolutely melting the links. Providing that covering beam. Weighing at 67 drones, which is that sweet spot uh, at three base saturation. But it does have four bases, so adding some more on now. And Archons. Oh, but you could get them while they're morphing. And the Zerglings are able to close in. Get even one Archon with Zergling. Nice. Huge pick off there. Wayne. But the, there's Mutas on the way. And no Roaches on the field in any amount of Archons. So that's kind of the best defense against Mutalis is a good offense. And right now, Max Pax has a deadly attack headed towards, well, uh, Wayne is likely going to lose his fourth, and his third base is very much in doubt right now. The Mutas are popping out. Stasis actually creates quite a funnel here for the Zergling. Zergling counter. And two Archons and a few Stalkers are enough. Magspax just kind of busted his way in here. Wayne tried a new Zerg strategy. And, well, here come... The Mutalis, gonna try to take out the Archons first. The most dangerous threat by far. The Zealots are coming in towards the alternative fourth. It just ain't working. It's just not gonna be enough. The Archons are chasing down the Mutas. The fact that Max Pax has already done this much damage. It doesn't matter if these Archons get cleaned up. He's going to deal, well, oh my. They do terrible, terrible damage to the Mutas. Part of the reason why it's so hard to find these muted timings without already going for Roach's Ergling earlier on. There are a lot of mutas on the field, but Phoenixes have been in production. Down goes another hatchery. Wayne took the other fourth, and the Zealot sliced it up. And it's a desperate counterattack here. He's going to warp in three more Archons, as well as having any number of Phoenixes to slow this down. Three! is more than enough to threaten. And a fourth base is already done. Max packs to 80 probes. There is a very, very small window. Wayne is going to try to build a Hydra Den. It's... He doesn't know the exact worker count. He knows it's not good, though. <laughs> There's not quite enough Phoenixes to just go chasing down these Mutas without risk. But it's enough for Wayne to realize that he's not bringing this one back. Max Pax holds on. I actually want to give some extra credit, an extra shout out to Wayne for kind of testing it out. And that was probably the most educational Protoss versus Zerg se series I've seen so far. So Colossi, still not great against the Roachling. Mutas, not that there were any changes to them, still quite an expensive reach against any army composition, to be honest. Um, and Hydras, dangerous, but that's when the Colossi come in. So quite a spread of games there, but Magpax, as would be predicted, usually comes out on top. But I hope you enjoy, and uh, I look forward to more out of Wayne. I'm going to continue featuring um, some lesser-known players, as uh, this is a great opportunity, I think, and some mirror matchups. Which mirror matchup should be the focus? Either way. Thank you for watching. If you got the means and motivation, it'd be awesome if you check out Patreon. And uh, either way, like and subscribe. Uh, thank you again for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope I made your day a little bit better. Good luck. Have fun. Stay chill.